This video is going to deal with radicals and their graphs. So graphing radical functions is very similar to quadratics. So let's remember what we knew about quadratics. The general vertex form quadratic equation was a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. And a, if you'll remember, told us which way it opens. h, remember, told us the left and right shifts how far over to the left or how far over to the right that we did. And k told us how much we were going to go up or down. So we have the same thing with these radical equations. It's just a times the square root of x minus h plus k instead of the quantity squared. So we want to know what y equal the square root of x looks like. So second x squared and x, I'm over in my calculator. i just let it graph it for me. Standard window should be good. And I'm making a rough sketch, and it looks something like this. So where is the starting point? This is called the minimum value. Well, if we go and look in our table, and we come back this way, you can see that we get 0, 0, but at negative 1, there's an error. And if we go anywhere beyond that, backward, we'll have an error. So that means that our starting point right here is 0, 0. OK, what is the domain? Remember, that's how far to the left and how far to the right does it go? Well, it starts at 0. That's how far to the left it goes. And it goes to infinity. That's what this arrowhead is telling me. So it would actually include 0 and go to infinity. All right, let's think about the range. Remember, that's how far up and how far down did we go. Well, we started at 0 and we went up from there. And we include the 0 because we actually started at that point, and it increased from there. So the biggest value we could have would be infinity. All right, so let's look at this graph. I'm just going to second insert here a negative 2 square root x. And now look at that graph. And if I look at that graph, I'm going to get a graph that looks something like this. And what is the starting point? Again, it looks like it's going to be 0, 0, but let's double check. And sure enough, 0, 0, negative 1, we start seeing the errors happen, so it's at 0, 0. This is actually not the minimum value. I copied and pasted this one. This is actually the maximum value, because if you look at that, that point is the highest point on our graph. So it's the maximum value. And the domain then starts at 0, but then it goes to the right forever. So the smallest value would be 0, and it goes to infinity, including 0 to infinity. The range that starts at 0, but it goes down from there. So actually, we start down at negative infinity. That's how low we go. And it goes all the way up to and including 0, but no farther. All right, so what happens if we just change this a little bit and put more underneath the radical? So second x squared, and now we're going to put x minus 4 in that graph. Remember that it started at 0, 0 for the square root of x. And when we look at the square root of x minus 4, it actually comes out here to 4, and then it starts. But we'll verify that. Does it really start at 4? Sure enough, there it is. 4 is when we can see that we have our minimum value. So what is the domain? The domain starts at 4 this time. Remember, that's our x values. And it's how far to the left and how far to the right. So it started at 4, and it goes to infinity. Again, these are x's, and we're going left to right. Now the range. We're still on the x-axis to start with, and then we move up. So we start at 0, and we go up to infinity. So remember that these are my y's, and we're talking about going up and down. How far up and how far down do we go? So one more thing we can do to our graph. What if we don't add or subtract underneath the radical? What if we take the square root of just plain x, and outside the radical we add 2? Remember? square root of x started at 0, and when we look at this graph, it looks like it might have started at 2 on the y-axis. 
Still looks like the same graph, it just shifted up. So let's go and see what happens. Negative 1 is where I have my error. 0 is where I start, but it's at 2. So my minimum value here is 0, 2. So what is my domain? Where do I start in the x's? My x's start at 0. And where do they go? They're increasing all the x's to the right are going to be included, so we have 2 infinity. Well, where does my range start? It starts at the y value of 2 and goes up. So 2 is the smallest value up to infinity. Nope. All right, so going back here now, we're going to put it all together. And let's see if we can figure out, what does this part in here do? That moves it left and right. And what does the constant out here do? The constant moves it up and down. So let's see if we can sketch it first before we verify with a calculator. So it's a plus 2. Remember, those are always backwards. So we're actually going to be at negative 2. But then this one tells me that I go down 3 because it's minus 3. So 1, 2, 3. So this should be where I'm starting right here. And it's a positive radical, so it should increase. And let's see what happens if we verify that with our graph. The square root of x plus 2 under the radical, to close the parenthesis, and then minus 3. And we want to look at our graph. And our graph looks very good. So we did it right. So what's our starting point? That point, negative 2, negative 3. What's my domain? Now I'm starting back here at negative 2. These are where my x's start and go this way forever. So I start at negative 2 and I go to infinity. Where do my y's start? My y's start down here and go up because the graph is getting bigger. It's increasing. So we go start at negative 3, include it, and it goes to infinity.